What do you mean? Yeah, oh, I see. What's going on with this wire? Does this wire look okay behind me? No. Well, I don't want to do it on camera. <laughs> oh, I know. Pushing that little black button and pull straight up. No, you should be, it should just kind of click yeah. in. Okay, let me, let me do a. Microphone check.
Hi, Sophia, come out here for a minute, please. Quit texting. Come out here. <laughs> My producer, Sophia Miller, isn't she? We, we almost like, we dressed alike today almost. So this is Sophia. Um, whoops. Uh-oh. <laughs> the microphone got caught. There we go. All right. <laughs> the microphone got caught in her... <laughs> The microphone guy caught in her pretty hair. Um, by the way, if you ever need a little bit of comedy relief, um, check the uh, like the trail outs or like the trail in. Sophia on the trail in today was doing dancing. Uh, yesterday she was she had Lulu in her lap and Lulu was doing the Macarena, and then she started doing uh, cloud cloud paws, waving waving paws like clouds. Uh, this is an Oasis class. Yes. <laughs> this is an Oasis class. Yes, it is. Um, so welcome to April Fool's Day. I'm the perfect person to be teaching on April Fool. And those of you who are, are my friends who are watching, you will understand why. Uh, good morning to Margaret. Good morning to Amy. Um, good, to, good to see you guys in on this stream. Joan, Darlene, and Robert. Awesome. Robert's a first timer. Awesome. Excellent, Robert. I hope you, well, you obviously enjoyed it because you came back. So that's awesome. Um, so today we're doing a Tai Chi for Everybody class. So that's this first hour. We're going to take a 15 minute break. And from 1115 to 1145, we're going to do a meditation class. I highly recommend this. In these very stressful times, it's a really good idea to do some uh, meditation. We're going to do a progressive relaxation meditation um, from 11:15 uh, to 11:45, and then at noon uh, we're going to do a little more advanced level Tai Chi. Um, but even Robert, stick around, take a take a gaze at it, see what you think. Um, probably want to get some music in the background as we get started here today. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I always start off with deep breathing. Uh, one of the best things that I can teach you, again, especially in these stressful, stressful times, is to do deep breathing, all right? And the Chinese teach us to breathe from our belly. Uh, a lot of times when uh, people breathe, they want to take in a deep breath and kind of suck in the stomach and puff out the chest. They'll take a deep breath and they'll kind of go and do this. Instead, we want to take a deep breath and go and let the belly expand, all right? This is really tough to do. We do it when we're a baby, um, but as we get older, we uh, forget how to deep breathe, and we start just using the top part of our lungs to deep breathe, okay? So we're gonna work on uh, deep breathing to start. Let's start off with our traditional Chinese bow, our right hand, we make it into a fist standing for power, left hand bringing our fingers together, signifying friendship, and then tuck in the thumb, signifying uh, humility, because with power must come being humble. Fisk into the palm, we say welcome, ni hao. It's certainly good to see everybody here. Uh, let's get started with those breathing exercises. We're gonna stand in what's known as the Wuji position, the feet are shoulder or hip distance apart. We put a slight bend in the knees. We drop the tailbone, head is lifted by a silk thread. So we have good straight body posture in this direction and looking at it from this angle, we have good straight body posture in this direction. Want to make sure we keep our back straight, make sure that you're not leaning forward or rounding the shoulders forward. Keep that body nice and straight, okay? Long, slow, deep belly breathing. Let's begin. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, fill those lungs up with air. Exhale, relax the hands down. Cameo appearances by dogs. Inhale. And exhale. Push the hands in front of us next. Inhale, hands up in front of the heart. Exhale, gently pushing the palms forward. Inhale. 
and exhale. Big deep belly breath in. Breathe out, push out. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Arms over the head next. Inhale, do whatever is comfortable for your shoulders. Exhale, gently push the palms to the ceiling. Inhale, hands back up under the chin. Exhale, relax the hands down. Again, long, slow, deep breath in. Long, slow, deep breath out. Inhale and exhale. This is so relaxing. Even Sophia is yawning. Inhale, fill those lungs up with air. Exhale, gently push the palms to the ceiling. Inhale and exhale. Very nice. Arms to the side. Inhale. Hands up in front of the heart. Exhale. Pushing the palms out. Notice my fingertips are up so I feel that nice stretch in my arms. Inhale. And exhale. Big deep belly breath in. Breathing out. Gently pushing out. Inhale and exhale. Let's do that one more time. Big, deep belly breath in. Breathing out, gently pushing out. Feel that beautiful stretch. Inhale, hands back up in front of the heart. Exhale, relax the hands down. Arms in the diagonals. Inhale, hands up in front of the heart. Exhale, left hand up, right hand down. Keep that upper body nice and straight. Make sure you're not leaning. Inhale, back to center. And then exhale, right hand up and left hand down, making the other leg of the X. Inhale, hands back up in front of the heart. Exhale, left up, right down. Keep looking straight ahead. Don't look at that upper hand. Inhale. And exhale, right hand up, left hand down. Sometimes people will tend to start looking towards that upper hand instead. I want to make sure you keep looking straight ahead, all right? Inhale, back to center. And then exhale. Inhale, bring the hands back up in front of the heart. And exhale. Inhale. Hands up in front of the heart. Exhale. Relax the hands down. We'll flap the arms like bird wings. Again, be kind to your shoulders. Inhale. Only do what your body allows you to do. All right. And exhale. Big, deep belly breath in. Exhale. Relax the hands down. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. And finally, gathering chi, my favorite. Inhale, moving the arms in a big, beautiful circle. Exhale, pushing the hands down like imagine you're pushing a beach ball underwater. Notice all my movements are very slow, very smooth. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. That's our breathing exercises. It's a really great way to start the day. Really good thing to do um, if you're feeling stressed. For any reason, why would you feel stressed now, right? Um, if you're having any stress in your life, do that deep breathing. Use that to calm and relax the body, okay? Also, 
Make sure that you are staying hydrated. Uh, part of doing Tai Chi is um, it helps boost our immune system. Uh, by letting the body calm down and relax, our immune system gets stronger, okay? The other thing we can do to help our immune system is to stay hydrated. When our body is dehydrated, um, it starts to put stress on the body, okay? So make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. Make sure you're keeping that body hydrated, okay? You want your immune system to be very strong and very powerful right now. And that's why it's so important uh, to do Tai Chi at this time. When uh, a lot of my students will, will recall me saying, um, when you start feeling sick is when you need to do more Tai Chi, not say, ah, I'll do that when I start feeling better. No, other way around. You start feeling bad, um, maybe you're getting the sniffles, it might just be allergies, um, but you wanna start doing more Tai Chi, build that immune system, all right? All right, so uh, we're gonna go through 12 warm-up exercises. These are two exercises for the neck, shoulders, lower spine, hips, knees, and ankles. Looks like we have a question. Oh. All right. Um, so I like to teach Tai Chi by using these warm-up exercises um, and taking these warm-up exercises and teaching you the principles of Tai Chi. Okay? And then we can apply those principles when we actually start doing forms. Okay? So... Wuji position, once again, knees bent, tailbone dropped, heads lifted by the silk thread. Remember, if your legs start to get tired, you can raise up a little bit. Just don't lock the knees out. Always leave a little bend in the knees, okay? Um, and of course, if you get too tired, please sit down. This is one of the beauties of doing a uh, video. If you get tired, you can just push it, push pause, sit down, relax for a few minutes, get a drink of water, and then hit, you know, when you're feeling better, hit play and continue on, okay? All right. So from that Wuji position, first one is called the chin tuck. You're going to keep that chin level. Imagine someone's pushing back on your face or pushing back on your chin. Just make sure you keep looking straight ahead. Uh, we keep looking straight ahead as we do this. We don't drop the chin. We're not looking at the ground, okay? Or we're not doing that classic looking over the glasses bifocal look either. I call that the bifocal look. Okay, so from Wuji position, we bring the hands up in front of us, hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, looking straight ahead. Rotate the palms out, the chin gently floats up, and sink the chin down to the chest. Again, we bring the hands up in front of us, hands to the chest, tucking in the chin, nice gentle stretch. Rotate the palms out, the chin gently floats up, and sink the chin gently down to the chest. One more time, bring the hands up in front of us. Hands to the chest, tucking in the chin. Beautiful stretch on the back of the neck. Rotate the palms out, let the chin gently float up, and sink the chin down to the chest. Beautiful. Next neck exercise, we're going to look side to side. All right, looking to one side, looking at one hand, pushing down on the other. Keep the head nice and straight as you do this. Prayer hand position, Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder, looking right, pushing down on the left. Inhale, come back to center. Come back to prayer hands, dog booty. Tai Chi ball, right hand is on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder, Gently pushing down on the right. Inhale, come back to center. Prayer hands, and she's back. Left hand on top, watch the right hand going over the right shoulder. Looking right, pushing down left. Inhale, come back to center. Prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, right hand is on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder, looking left, pushing down on the right. Inhale, come back to center. One more time, Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Watch the right hand going over the right shoulder. I'm looking right, I'm pushing down left. Nice gentle stretch. Inhale, back to center, never force the neck. Tai Chi ball, right hand is on top. Watch the left hand going over the left shoulder, looking left and pushing down on the right. 
inhale, come back to center, come back to prayer hands, exhale, relax the hands down. Forward shoulder circles next, just like the neck, we don't want to force the shoulder. Shoulders very delicate. Bring the shoulders back, up, forward, and down. Keep the hands down by the side, shoulders back, up, forward, and down. One more time, shoulders back, up, forward, and down. Beautiful, now reverse that. Shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Shoulders forward, up, back, and down. One more time, shoulders forward, up, back, and down. Excellent. Next, gathering chi, we're reaching for infinity. Imagine someone's gently pulling on your wrist. This is opening and expanding the body. Don't let yourself, as you get old, we don't want the body to close off and close down on itself. Instead, we wanna open and expand the body, all right? Chinese call this reaching for infinity. Inhale, gently reaching out, reaching up, feel the chest, back, shoulder, elbow, open and expand. Exhale, relax the hands down. Once again, gently reaching out, reaching up, feel that nice, gentle stretch. And then exhale, relax the hands down. <clears throat> Beautiful, one more time, gently reaching out, reaching up. And exhale, relax the hands down. Very nice. So that was opening up the body horizontally. Now we're gonna open up the body vertically, touching heaven and earth. This is one of my favorites. Um, and since it's one of my favorites, it's also then one of your favorites. That's kind of how it works. So I'm, imagine that I'm lifting my head up by this silk thread, all right? Looking at this from the side, I look straight ahead of me and I feel like my head is gently floating to the ceiling, okay? I'm opening up the spinal column. I'm opening up this whole area of the body. Several of my students have gotten taller, myself included, when they do Tai Chi. I've actually grown one or two inches, um, depending on which doctor you believe. Uh, I've grown one or two inches uh, since I've started doing Tai Chi. Okay, this is called Touching Heaven and Earth. Inhale to prayer hands. Left hand up, right hand down, float the head gently to the ceiling. And then inhale back to center. Right hand is up, left hand is down, gently float the head to the ceiling. Inhale back to center. Exhale, left hand up, right hand down, float that head gently to the ceiling, feel that nice stretch. Inhale back to center. Right hand is up, left hand is down, gently stretch that spine. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, left hand up, right hand down, nice gentle stretch in the spine. Inhale, back to center. Right hand up, left hand down, again gently stretching the spine. And then inhale, come back to center. Back to prayer hands, exhale, relax the hands down. Next, lower spine exercise. We're gonna keep our hips square to the front. Turn our belly button from the left side to the right side. I guess that's an April Fool's joke today is that the dogs are gonna keep making cameo appearances for us. Keep the hips square to the front. I'm turning the belly button from the left side to the right side without turning the hips, okay? So, as I turn, I'm not leaning to the left and leaning to the right, but I rotate around my spinal column. So I turn left and turn right, keeping that good straight body posture, okay? Prayer hand position. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Exhale, bring the ball to the left. Inhale the ball over, right hand is on top. Exhale, gently sweep and turn to the right. The hands are right in front of the belly button, in front of the Dantian. Inhale the ball over, left hand is on top. Exhale, gently sweep and turn to the left. Inhale the ball over, right hand is on top. Exhale, gently sweep and turn right. Inhale the ball over, left hand is on top. Exhale to the left. 
Inhale the ball over, right hand is on top. Exhale to the right. Feel that nice stretch in your spine. Inhale the ball over, come back to center, two prayer hands, exhale, relax the hands down. Awesome. That's our first six exercises, all right? That's all the upper body. Now we're gonna move to the hips, knees, and ankles. So for this, I wanna make sure that you have a chair next to you, okay? Um, it's important that you stay safe. And since I can't see you, either one is fine. Uh, since I can't see you, oh, my lovely assistant, Sophia, we'll call her Vanna. <laughs> Um, make sure you have that chair to the side. This is kind of a high back chair, so use whatever is comfortable for you, okay? Um, but since I can't see you, it's important that you stay safe, all right? Safety is the overriding theme, okay? So you turn the chair sideways, so it kind of gives you a long spot to hold on to here. If you feel like you need to put another chair to the other side of you, all right? Again, I want to make sure that um, everyone stays safe, all right? All right, so work on your posture, keeping your head and shoulders over your hips. First exercise, I weight shift to the right, head, shoulders over the hips, one nice straight line. I've got a bend in the right knee, which allows me to tap my left foot, or I can extend the left foot out, okay? As I weight shift, notice my body stays straight. I'm not doing leaning right and left, I'm keeping the body nice and straight, okay? All right, prayer hand position. Weight shifts to the right, bend in the right knee, use that chair if you need to, tap the left foot or extend the left foot out. Set the left foot down, weight shifts left, bend in the left knee, upper body stays straight, tap or extend the right leg. Come back through center. Oh, somebody asked me the question. It wasn't online, it was offline. Somebody asked me the question, what do I do with my hands in that particular motion? Uh, well, if you don't need to hold on to the chair, what you can do with your hand is, as I weight shift to the right, I extend my right hand out in front of me, and you can leave the palm facing towards the ground, or if you have the flexibility, you can rotate the palm out like you're pushing against a wall, okay? And then that left hand comes underneath the elbow. Okay, um, now do what your shoulder and arms allow you to do. I don't want you to be in this position where you're trying to do this and torquing your shoulder out. From the side coming towards the camera, it looks like this. I start out in prayer hands as I weight shift right, I'm continuing to mirror. I extend the right hand out, rotating the palm out if possible, and the left hand kind of tucks underneath that elbow. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with the hands. As always with Tai Chi, make sure you learn the feet first, then worry about the hands. Tai Chi is rooted in the feet, it's governed in the Dantian, and it's expressed in the hands. And that's the same way we learn it from the ground up, all right? Same way a plant grows. Prayer hand position. Push right, weight right, bend in the right knee, tap or extend the left leg. Come back through center, push left, weight left, bend in the left knee, tap or extend the right leg. Come back through center. Notice I'm putting my feet down, I'm going right back into that Wuji position. Push right, weight right, tap or extend the left leg. Come back through center, push left, weight left, tap or extend the right leg. And come back to center, relax the hands down. Beautiful. Next exercise is the Chinese Hokey Pokey. I'm turning sideways to demonstrate this one. I'm tapping the heel in front of me empty. I'm tapping the toe behind me empty. Keep that toe in close as you start. As you get better, you'll be able to extend that out. Notice I'm always keeping the upper body nice and straight. I'm not leaning backwards and leaning forwards. Also notice that the leg that the weight is on, that knee stays bent. I don't lift up and lock the knee out. Use your chair. This one really tests your balance, okay? Weight shift to the right, empty, left heel, hands behind us, and then transition, empty left toe, hands in front of us. Notice I'm keeping space between my feet. Empty heel and empty toe. One more time, empty heel 
and empty toe. And back to center. Beautiful weight shifts to the left. Bend in the left knee, empty right heel, hands behind us. Empty right toe, hands in front of us. Empty on the heel. Empty on the toe. One more time. You can touch down as you transition if that makes it easier for you. Empty heel and empty toe. And back to center. Beautiful. All right. Now the fun part. Heel kick. Yay. I heard, I heard a bunch of people cheer out there when I said that. Um, <clears throat> make sure that you're holding on to your chair as you do this exercise. I want you to stay safe. We're going to do four motions with the leg. First, we're going to pick the leg up. Second, kick the leg out. And it's perfectly fine to do a low heel kick if you want. Third, we pick the leg back up. Fourth, float the foot to the ground. All right. Keep the body straight in this direction. Keep the back straight in this direction. The leg that's on the ground, keep a nice gentle bend in the knee. Okay. If you are able to punch out the opposite hand, that's wonderful. It's more important that you hold onto the chair and you stay safe. Okay. Key part of this exercise is that lifting of the knee. Okay. All right. Hands loosely clenched to the belt line. Weight shift to the right, bend in the right knee. Use that chair if you need to. Pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out the right fist. Pick up that left leg and float the foot to the ground. Weight shifts to the left, keep a bend in the left knee. Pick up the right leg and heel kick right, punch out the left fist if you're able to. Pick up the right leg and float the foot to the ground. Weight shifts right, upper body stays straight. Pick up the left leg, heel kick left, punch out the right fist. Pick up the left leg, float the foot to the ground. Weight shifts left, bend in the left knee, pick up the right leg. Heel kick right, punch out the left fist if you are able to. Pick up the right leg, float the foot to the ground. Very nice. One more time. Weight shifts right. Pick up the left leg. Heel kick left. Punch out the right fist. Hold this for a half hour. Come back to center. April Fool. Weight shifts left. Pick up the right leg. Heel kick right. Punch out the left fist. And pick up the right leg. Float the foot to the ground. When I first started doing Tai Chi, I could not do that exercise. I was in my mid 40s and you know I thought I was in pretty decent shape. I thought I had pretty good balance. I couldn't do that exercise. It took me a couple of weeks to be able to do that exercise. Um, and I've, I've seen with my students in about week number six, if you're doing it once a week, usually right around week number six, um, people, that exercise becomes more comfortable, all right? We don't lose our balance overnight. You're not going to get it back overnight. Okay. Next, bow stance. Uh, stepping out empty. So the front foot is an empty step, meaning that I set down the heel and the toe, but there's no weight on the front foot. All the weight is staying on the back foot. I set this foot down empty. Now, your empty step may be different than mine. I have my right toe I'm going to come out of mirroring for a second. I have my right toe right on this blue line of the tape. So my Wuji stance, both toes would be on that blue line, looking at it from the side. As I weight shift, your empty step may be such that your heel is right on that blue line. And then you do the bow stance, shifting the weight forward. Okay, that's fine. You need to do what is comfortable for you. The point is, is that I'm not falling forward on the front foot, that I'm keeping the weight back as I step out empty, all right? This is a key point. This is a key principle of Tai Chi. If you take a real close examination of the form, you will notice it consists of stepping out empty and then shifting weight onto that foot. Empty step, shifting weight onto the foot. This is where we learn that, okay? So make sure that you're not falling forward. If <clears throat> If you want to confirm that it's an empty step, 
what you can do is as you weight shift, as you set this foot out, notice my foot is hovering about an inch above the floor. If I'm able to do that and then set the foot down, that is indeed an empty step, okay? If, you, if you're not able to let that foot hover over the floor, then it's not an empty step, okay? It's always a good way to double check yourself. So, bow stance, make sure you're doing an empty step. Final note, as you step out, keep this wide spacing between your feet, all right? I'm very stable in this position. I start stepping in like this, or even worse, try and walk on a balance beam. Now I'm very unstable, okay? Some of my students would say that would be the case all the time, but we won't go into that right now. Weight shifts to the right, step out empty left foot, Weight shifts left, punch out right fist. Keep that back nice and straight. Weight shifts back, come back to center. Weight shifts to the left, step out empty right. Notice my body is straight in this direction. And as I shift weight forward, it stays straight. I have about 70% of the weight up on the front leg. Weight shifts back, come back to center. All right, I'm gonna turn sideways to give you a sideway view of this, okay? I'm gonna continue mirroring so I don't mess up my brain too bad. Um, oh, but that will mess you up. So, I'll come out of mirroring. So I weight shift to the right, step out empty left, weight shifts left, punch out the right fist. Weight shifts back, come back to center. Weight shifts to the left, Step out, empty right. Bow stance, notice how I'm keeping my back straight. I'm looking straight ahead. Weight shifts back, come back to center. Beautiful, come back here. Now back to mirroring again. Oh, I'm gonna hurt my brain. Uh, weight shifts to the right. Step out, empty left, bow stance. Weight shifts left, punch out the right fist. Weight shifts back, come back to center. And weight shifts right, step out empty left, and bow stance. Weight shifts back, come back to center. Very nice, all right. Um, two more exercises for our ankles, very important exercises. Weight shifts to the right, keeping a bend in the right knee, keeping the upper body straight, left foot, touch heel, and toe. Heel and toe. Heel and toe. Now, weight shifts to the left, right foot, touch heel and toe. Heel, toe, heel and toe. Weight shifts back to the right, left foot, touch little toe and big toe. Outside of the foot, inside of the foot, little piggy, big piggy. And then weight shifts to the left, right foot, touch little toe and big toe. Outside of the foot, inside of the foot, or with a nod of gratitude towards Bill Pickett, touch your corn and your bunion. Corn and bunion and back to center awesome shake those legs loose beautiful see we can exercise and have fun get yourself a drink of water let's start part two now this time in classes everybody starts talking and it takes me forever to get everyone to stop talking you guys know who you are um, but if you want to talk to your neighbor right now just pause it and come back okay all right how many peeps Sophia 45 people joining in. Yes. <laughs> Judy is saying the canines are a bonus. So thank you for saying that, Judy. You made Sophia's day. Good. I'm glad you're liking the canine cameos. I like that. Uh, again, uh, check out the at the very end. You know how you go to a movie theater and sometimes they have like outtakes on trailers? So on some of the trailers, you'll see my daughter's dancing, or yesterday you could see Lulu doing the Macarena or doing dog paws, like waving hands like clouds, but dog style instead. So, um, okay, let's do 
Uh, let's do a leg exercise. Oh, I heard the cheers go up. This is a great way to improve your leg strength, all right? I like to call this the dragon dance. So start by weight shifting, <coughs> excuse me, weight shifting to the right, bending the right knee, bring the, uh, hold it. I went out of mirroring, didn't I? <coughs> let's try that, hang on. I gotta get a drink of water, sorry folks. I'm gonna go off. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble. Okay, let's try that again. We're gonna weight shift to the left, right foot, cat stance. So all the weight stays on the left. I'm tapping the right toe next to the left foot. Now I'm gonna tap the right toe out in front of us. Empty, no weight, all the weight staying left. I come back into the cat stance once again. That's Sophia, for all you cat lovers out there. Tap, right toe out to the side. Come back into the cat stance. And tap the right toe behind us. Notice I'm keeping space between my feet. My foot is not directly behind me, but it's out to the side. Come back into the cat stance and step into Wuji. Feel that work the legs just a little bit? Weight shifts to the right, left foot, cat stance. Tap, left toe out in front. Into the cat stance. Even the dogs are looking at her. Tap, left toe out to the side. Into the cat stance. And tap, left toe behind us. Again, keeping space between the feet. Come back into the cat stance. And step into Wuji. All right, shake those legs loose. By the way, for those of you newcomers, that is indeed called the cat stance, and you will see that stance a lot in Tai Chi. And it's uh, based, if you ever watch a cat, when it's ready to pounce, all the weight's on one foot, and the other foot is kind of gently touching on the ground. That's where they got the name, the cat stance, okay? Round two, adding some more weight shifting. Yay, I heard 45 people cheer. <laughs> Weight shifts to the left, right foot, cat stance once again. Tap, right toe out in front. Set the right foot down, pause for one second. Look down at your feet. That should be about where your feet were when we did the bow stance, okay? All right. Weight shifts forward, bring all the weight to the right foot, and then tap that left toe behind us or float the left foot if you are able to. Set the left foot down, weight shift back onto the left, and right cat stance once again. Tap, right toe out to the side, empty. Set the right foot down, no weight on it. See, I'm keeping all my weight left. Now shift weight to the right, upper body stays straight, and then tap or float the left foot. Set the left foot down, weight shifts back to the left, and right cat once again. Tap the left toe behind us, empty. This is the exciting one. Keep your weight on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left. Keep your weight left as you set the right foot down. Now, weight shift back onto the right, keep the back straight, tap or float the left toe in front of us. Set the left foot down, weight shifts onto the left, and right cat stance once again. And step into Wuji. Very nice. Other side, weight shifts. <laughs> weight shifts to the right, left cat stance. So, Sophia is very proud of herself right now for doing cat noises. Tap, left toe in front, although we taught her that at two, so she's retained that memory, so we're very proud of that. <laughs> Set the left foot down, <laughs> weight shifts left. Tap or float, right toe behind us. I shouldn't give up my producer trouble, should I? 
Set the right foot down, weight shifts to the right, and left cat stance. Yeah. Tap, left toe out to the side. Set the left foot down, no weight on it. Now, weight shifts to the left, all the weights left, tap or float the right toe. Set the right foot down, weight shifts right, and left cat stance. Tap the left toe behind us. Set the left foot down, no weight on it. Now weight shift back onto the left, tap, float, right toe in front of us. Set the right foot down, weight shifts onto the right, left cat stance once again. And then step out into Wuji and shake those legs loose. Nice work. All right. That's a great way to increase your leg strength, okay? Um, if you're having trouble getting up and down from a chair, if you're using a walker, if you're using a cane, um, those are all signs that you're losing leg strength. Uh, you can always build leg strength back up. You just have to work a little harder at it. As you get older, uh, being old doesn't mean you have to lose muscle strength. It just means you have to work a little harder at it. And that's a really good exercise to do that with, okay? Okay, um, let's do the prayer wheel. Remember, if you have any questions, you can type them to Sophia. She will relay the pertinent questions to me. Um, I'll try and answer a few. I'm still backed up from yesterday because as soon as I got done teaching yesterday, I had to do a road trip. So I didn't get back to like 7 p.m. and then I had other stuff I had to do. So, okay, let's do the prayer wheel. Similar to the bow stance where we step out empty, we weight shift forward and we weight shift backwards. This is a great way to relax and calm the body, all right? Hand motions with this one. The the weight shifting is, is very similar to the bow stance where I step out empty, I weight shift forward, I weight shift backwards. I'm keeping both feet rooted to the ground. I'm not rocking up on the heel and the toe as I do this one, okay? Um, with the hands, what I'm doing is, as I bring my hands up, fingers facing towards the ground. When my arms become parallel, I rotate the fingers towards heaven. And as I weight shift back, my hands come back into the chest. And I just move back around. So it's like I'm holding on to a big ball and moving that ball in a big, beautiful circle. All right. Okay. So let's give that a shot. Weight shifts to the left. Step out empty right and begin. Exhale, weight shifts forward. Inhale, weight shifts back. Keep that back nice and straight. Keep the knees bent. Exhale. And inhale. Weight shifts forward. Weight shifts back. And one more time. Exhale. And inhale. Now, all the weight is left. Right foot is empty. Pick the right foot up. Come back to center. Weight shifts right. Step out empty left and continue. Exhale and inhale. Weight shifts forward. Weight shifts back. <clears throat> Exhale, weight shift forward. Inhale, weight shifts backwards. Exhale. Inhale, one more time, exhale, and inhale. All the way is now right, pick up the left foot, come back to center, and relax the hands down. Beautiful. That's called the prayer wheel. You can take the prayer wheel and, and turn that into a moving meditation. It becomes a real beautiful thing, a, a, definitely a thing of beauty, and a really good way to calm the body down sometimes just deep breathing alone will not allow our body to calm down sometimes we need to add physical movements in uh, to calm the body down and that prayer wheel you start regulating the breathing slowing down becomes a beautiful thing okay all right is everybody having fun give me a cheer out there Woohoo! all right 
<laughs> All right. So we're going to go back through Tai Chi for Arthritis form part one. Now, um, on my website, which is Tai Chi STL.com, we'll roll, roll that at the uh, end in the credits also, Tai Chi STL.com, I have lots of resources on there the breathing exercises that we do at the beginning of class, the warm up exercises we do. The Tai Chi for Arthritis movements are all under the documents and training library, so you can check those out, all right, uh, as you practice at home, or now you have a video, so you can just follow along to the video. Today, I want to look at something called the open and close exercise, all right? This is really important. It's a really important movement in the Soon style of Tai Chi. In fact, it's so important that Soon Lu Tang, who developed the Soon style of Tai Chi, uh, by the way, Soon is pronounced, it's pronounced Soon, like S-O-O-N. Um, it's spelled S-U-N, okay? Soon Lu Tang uh, was the one who developed that. So um, so the Soon style of Tai Chi, did we lose feed? It looks like we may have lost camera for a second. Okay, so we're gonna hold off from it. Um, Sophia's gonna work on that. It's not the battery. Oh, really? That's interesting. All right, so the picture's gonna go dark for just a minute. I'm gonna talk for just a moment about the inhale and exhale of the Soon style of Tai Chi. So Soon Lu Tang felt that the, uh, the inhale, exhale was so important that inhale is one movement and exhale is, ne is a separate movement, all right? So the inhale, pulling the hands apart, is one movement. Exhale is a second movement. And when you see the different movements of the Tai Chi for arthritis form or the Soon style of Tai Chi, hi! Um, as you see those different movements, um, you'll understand why he thought it was so important. Go ahead and change your zoom a little bit there also, and that will help you, Sophia. It's uh, other direction. There we go. Oh, that looks, sorry about the picture. Uh, we had a fully charged battery. I don't know what happened with that one. So, um, okay. So open and close. It's a very simple exercise. Open and close. Sorry for that little picture glitch there. Open and close. Okay. It's a breathing in and breathing out, but there's a lot more that goes on with that exercise. So in our warm up exercise, we talked about opening up the body vertically. Um, when we were doing the uh, gathering chi about expanding and opening the body. And then after that, we touched heaven and earth. We're lifting our head up by the silk thread. So in that exercise, you can open and expand the body. You can open the body horizontally. You can open the body vertically and do all of that while you're doing that open and close. So the open and close doesn't just become an inhale, exhale. Let's move on to the next one. But it becomes an inhale and exhale. I'm broadening the chest in the back. I'm lifting the head. Exhale. You can also get the hips involved opening up the hips as you do this, okay? One final note, I, I love this example. Uh, Dr. Lam talked about on the open and close exercise that if someone is watching you from behind, they say they're doing something, but I don't know what it is. And they don't know what it is because they're not recognizing it. But, but now you know what to look for. So watching someone do it from behind, open and close. Now you know what you're looking for, okay? So let's go through Tai Chi for Arthritis Part 1. I want you to concentrate on that open and closing movements, all right? That expanding of the body as you do the open and close. We have, if I'm remembering correctly, it's either five or seven times to practice the open and close. That's how important you thought it was, okay? And as we do Tai Chi for Rehabilitation tomorrow, we do three of the open and closes right in a row, okay? So, Tai Chi for Arthritis. <clears throat> in last week's video, I went through a lot of these moves in detail. So if you're just learning the movement, you can go back there um, and look at, review those tapes. Right now, I want you to concentrate on that opening and closing and feeling the body expand, okay? I heard you say, okay, thank you. We begin with commencement. Picking the hands up sinking down, 
Weight shifts right, step out empty left. Weight shifts left, right foot forward. Our first open and close, inhale and exhale. Single whip to the right, weight shifts left, adjust the right foot, opening the hands, don't go too wide with the hands. Cloud hands three times to the right, weight shifts left, right foot in, right hand down. Step out right, shift hands and sweep weight. Step, shift, and sweep. Or feet, hands, weight. Feet, hands, weight. One more time. Step, shift, sweep. Step, shift, sweep. Bring the right hand up. Here's your second chance to open and close. Single whip left. Weight shifts right. Adjust that left foot. Opening the hands up. Cloud hands three times to the left. Weight shifts right. Step, shift, and sweep. Step, shift, sweep. Step. Shift, sweep, feet, hands, weight. Feet, hands, weight. Step, shift, sweep. Bring the left hand up. Back to prayer hands. Once again, we open and close. Brush knee sequence left. Weight shifts left. Toe in right. Sink right. And brush knee. Half step. Play the lute. Step back on the right. Sink weight right. Half step. Left foot. Parry and punch. Turn the thumbs to the front. Step out left and shift weight. Step out right. Shift weight. Step out left. Block and punch. Half step. Left foot. Or right foot. Sorry. Step back on the right, weight shifts right, half step left, and then step out on the left, half step right. Turn back to the front. Open and close. Brush knee sequence right, weight shifts right, toe in left. Sink onto the left and brush knee. Half step. Play the loop, turn the palms in, step back. Half step right foot. Turn the thumbs to the front. Step out right. Shift weight. Step out left. Shift weight. And then step out right. Block with the right. Punch with the left. Half step left foot. Embrace the tiger. Or block and close. Half step right foot. And then push the mountain. Weight shifts right. Half step left foot. Turn back to the front. Here we go. Last open and close. And then we close the form. Hands out in front of us. Back up to the standing position. Weight shifts right and step in left. Beautiful. Shake those legs loose. Get a drink of water. How'd that feel? It's a real pretty movement, that opening and closing, okay? Remember, if you're just learning the Tai Chi, I know some of you are new. If you're learning Tai Chi for arthritis, go back to my videos from week one. Um, I have some pretty specific directions on each one of those movements, okay? Uh, one day I did the basic six, uh, the beginning part, and the second I did the advanced six, and that's that brush knee. So go back and check those out, okay? Um, I tell you what, I'd like to do that one more time. Let's go through the whole sequence one more time. But now, instead of just opening in the body and expanding the body on just the open and close, I want you to look for other opportunities to do that throughout the form. Because in each one of the movements, we can do the movement small. I can do a small brush knee and that's just fine. Or I can work on opening the body up, expanding the body as I do a brush knee. Okay? Um, so look for those other opportunities to
to open and expand the body. So let's go through it one more time. Um, and not only open, uh, we want that opening not to happen just on the open and closes, but through all the different movements, okay? All right, I'm getting close on time here, so I'm trying to fit a lot in a little space here. So let's begin. Commencement, opening, expanding the body, sink down, weight shifts, open up the hip as you step out, opening up the shoulders as you reach forward, and then open, close, expand that whole body. Single whip to the right. Feel the body open and expand. Cloud hands three times to the right. Throughout this whole sequence, feel the head lifted by the silk thread. Feel the roundness in the arms and the shoulders. The body's opening, it's expanding, rounding. Come back to center, open and close. Single whip to the left. Cloud hands three times to the left. Again, feel the body opening, expanding. You can even work on the hips opening. Once you feel like your spine is open and your chest and back, you can work on the hips opening. And back to center, open and close. Brush knee left. Play the lute. Parry and punch. Great way to expand and open up the body. Open up the hips as I step. Open up the shoulders as I parry. Block and punch. Am I still on camera? Embrace the tiger. And push the mountain. <laughs> Open and close. Brush knee sequence right. Again, opening, expanding the body. Play the lute. Parry and punch. Embracing the tiger. And pushing the mountain. Return to the front. Open, close. And close the form. And then go, ta-da. All right. We only have a few, few minutes left. We're going to take a 15-minute, we're going to do a cool-down exercise. We're going to take a 15-minute break. We're going to come back and do meditation. Um, then another 15-minute break. At noon, we're going to um, do some more advanced Tai Chi. We're going to work with uh, Tai Chi for Arthritis Part 2. Again, if you have any questions, you can email me, craigm at com. Or just go to my website, scroll down. You can contact me that way. Uh, let's do our cool downs. Lightly punch, slap the legs. We gave your legs a lot of work today. So make sure that you hydrate. Um, do a little bit of stretch. All right. Next, tighten up all the muscles in the body, arms, legs, face. Squeeze those muscles and relax. Again, tighten up the muscles. Squeeze the muscles and relax. And one more time, tighten up the muscles, squeeze the muscles, and relax. And finally, we will gather chi. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, and one more time. Inhale and exhale. Very, very nice. 
All right. I'll see you back in 15 minutes to do some meditation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all your kind notes and uh, well wishes. I appreciate it. And of course, and of course, thank you to Sophia for producing back there. And I'm supposed, she tells me I'm supposed to smile for the camera. <laughs> all right. We'll see you in 15. Thanks.
Hi there. Welcome to April Fool's Day. I'm the perfect fool to help you for today. Um, I, I think we're going to name the class the Stream Team. So, uh, Sophia tells me we have about 21 people joining us for meditation. So, I thought today we would do the progressive relaxation meditation once again. Okay. Um, it's so important nowadays with the stress um, of everything happening in our world. It's so important to spend a little time um, and relaxing, okay? So next week we'll do a, a little bit different meditation if you would like. Uh, but I think this progressive relaxation is uh, such an important one to do and such an important thing uh, to master, okay? A um, couple of things. If you haven't checked them out already, if you go back into my blog, I did, I've got two blogs dedicated to deep breathing. Uh, one of the blogs tells us why it's so important we should deep breathe. And then the second blog tells us how to do deep breathing. This deep breathing is the essential part of meditation. So it's very important that you understand the deep breathing. Um, I also wrote a, it's kind of tied into those two things. Um, right when we were first getting reports about the coronavirus, um, early in March, I had another blog about why it's important to, to do this streaming that we're doing here and how important it is for our health. And there's lots of things in there about um, how the deep breathing helps build our immune system. So if you want to go back and look at a few things, uh, those are three good blogs to look at uh, talking about the importance of deep breathing, okay? Um, and so when you start with meditation, you always start with that deep breathing. You want to have a good foundational knowledge of the deep breathing, okay? Um, and that foundational knowledge is, is as we inhale, the belly should expand. And as we exhale, the belly should contract. Let me show you this from the side, all right? So um, when you tell some people to deep breathe, a lot of times they'll take a deep breath and they'll kind of suck the stomach in and puff the chest out. Instead, that's actually considered upside down breathing. Instead, what we want to do is as we breathe in, let the belly expand. And as we breathe out, let the belly contract. Okay? So by that way, by doing that, we use all of our lungs. Um, by the, allowing the belly to expand out, we allow the diaphragm to drop all the way down. Okay? Opening up the chest cavity. Okay? Um, so... One other thing that you can do with this is if you put one hand, my rib cage comes together, sternum is right here. So I take the upper knuckle of my right hand and put that right below the sternum, okay? And then I take my left hand and put the upper knuckle of my left hand right below my belly button. So one hand is below the sternum, just below the rib cage, and the other hand is just below the belly button. And then you want to concentrate on as you breathe in that the lower hand moves and expands. And then as you breathe out, that lower hand comes in. The upper hand shouldn't move, just the lower hand. This works really well if you're laying down in bed. You can lay on your back in bed and put your hands here and practice this laying down. It works really well uh, to practice it laying down. And then you try and practice it sitting and then you work on doing it standing. Um, if you can get this deep breathing involved in your life and do breathe, deep breathing on a regular basis, you will see your health expand and get so much better. Um, our body needs oxygen. We cannot live without oxygen for but um, a few minutes, all right? Uh, we can live without water. We can live without food for, for days, weeks at a time. Um, but we cannot live without oxygen, only minutes, all right? And so it's very important to do this deep breathing. Uh, become an expert at deep breathing, and you will become a very healthy person, okay? So we're going to do a progressive relaxation uh, meditation. And the, what I like to do is I like to start at the feet and let the feet kind of relax, and then we work through the legs and the hips and work our way up the body, and then I do the hands and the arms, shoulders, and finish as I go up, okay? Um, so if you get a little thrown off, if you get interrupted, um, 
always revert back to the deep breathing, okay? Um, you're going to have thoughts that are going to come through your mind, and you want to just let those thoughts float through like clouds in the sky, okay? Don't try and hold on to any of those thoughts. Just let them kind of gently float through, okay? All right, let's give this a try. So you can do this laying down if you want. You can do this seated. Uh, you can do it standing if you want. Um, in each case, you want to make sure that you have good straight posture. So as I sit, I kind of rock forward on the pelvis. The head is lifted by a silk thread. I have good straight body posture in this direction, and I have good straight body posture in this direction. Okay. We're going to do long, slow, deep breathing. We're going to start out with a few cleansing breaths. Any comments or any questions, Sophia, before I start? <coughs> Someone wrote. <coughs> oh, whoever commented that the dogs need treats, Sophia said, stay on between meditation and the next class. Uh, I guess she's going to do that for you. She's shaking her head yes. All right. So we're sitting up nice and straight and tall, feet flat on the floor, heads lifted by the silk thread. Your hands can gently rest on your legs or your knees if you want. Uh, some people like to put the middle finger and thumb together. Some people like to do the pointer finger and thumb together in a circle. Whatever you are comfortable with is fine with me. Okay. All right. Let's start by a few cleansing breaths. Close the eyes, big deep belly breath in. And breathe out. Inhale, fill those lungs up with air. And exhale. Sophia, you can increase the music if you want. You're, you're in charge of the balance with the music. Sometimes the music a little louder is nice. Not loud, but a little louder. Inhale. And exhale. Releasing all of those thoughts from our mind. Not thinking about what happened earlier today not worried about what could happen later this afternoon. Stay present in the here and now. All right, let's begin with the feet. Inhale, big deep belly breath in. I like to imagine that I'm exhaling through my feet any stress and tension I'm feeling in my feet, I'm pushing it out of my feet into the earth. Inhale, long, slow, deep breath in. Exhale, relaxing the feet. Your feet may start to feel a little heavy now, and that's fine. You're starting to relax. Next, let's move to the lower legs and the ankles. Again, I like to imagine I'm breathing out through my lower legs. stress and tension drain away from our body. Next, we're going to relax our upper legs and our knees, our thighs and our hamstrings. Big, deep belly breath in. should equal your exhale. Feel like you're breathing 
out through your upper legs. Feel all the muscles in your upper legs relax, some of the biggest muscles in the body. those legs relaxing. I feel myself relaxing as I'm doing this. This is a wonderful feeling. Now let's relax the hips. So relax the muscles in your bottom. Relax your hips. mind back to the breathing as it wants to wander away. Bring the mind back to the breathing. Now we're going to concentrate on our central core. I want us first to start with our belly. Relax the muscles in the belly. Feel the muscles in the belly become soft and relaxed. And now we're going to focus internally. A lot of times we hold stress and tension in our stomach, in our intestines, which causes us irritable bowel syndrome or constipation. So now focus that releasing of stress inside to the intestines and the stomach. slow, deep breaths. You may find yourself yawning, and that's okay. That's the sign that the body is relaxing. Feel that stress and tension drain away from your stomach. Feel your insides become soft and gentle. Feel the serenity washing over the body. And now let's look at our lower back, relaxing the muscles in the lower back. Again, I imagine I'm breathing out through my lower back. I feel my lower back where it attaches to the hips and my bottom. I feel those muscles relaxing. 
becoming soft and gentle. I keep my good posture. I don't round the back, but I relax the back. Next, we move to the upper back. Let the shoulder blades relax. Let all the muscles in the upper back relax. The Chinese tell us that we hold anger between our shoulder blades. It's time to let that anger go. Time to start living our life relaxed. Let that anger drain away. Replace it with calmness and serenity. You don't deserve to live your life in anger. You deserve to have a happy and healthy full life. Next, let's focus on our hands. Relax the muscles in our hands. Again, imagine you're breathing out through your hands. to exchange human chi <coughs> allows us to become receptive to other person's chi and their energy. And so as we breathe out through the hands, we're opening up that gateway so we can become more receptive to the energy around us. Next, we'll move to the wrist and the lower arms. Relax all the muscles in the lower arms. Let the wrist become soft and supple. Not loose and floppy, but soft, gentle. Feel the muscles in the lower arm relax. And then relax the muscles in the upper arms. Relax the muscles in the elbows. Your arms may start to feel heavy now, that's fine. That's a great sign that they're relaxing. Imagine you're breathing out through the upper arms. Now let's consider our shoulders. Imagine you're breathing out through your shoulders. Shoulders are very important here. As we relax the shoulders, we feel our arms and the relaxation in our arms 
connect to the rest of the body, any relaxation we feel in the rest of the body. As Americans, we hold a lot of stress in our shoulders. Let that stress drain away. Feel the shoulders connecting the body and the arms together. Feel that stress flowing away from our shoulders. Stress can be very debilitating to us. One of my students' son had so much stress that they thought he had a torn rotator cuff. Turns out all he needed to do was learn how to relax. So relax the shoulders, relax the back, relax the arms. Now let's relax the muscles in the upper, or I'm sorry, in the neck. Relax the muscles in the neck. Keep the head lifted by a silk thread. And feel those muscles in the neck relaxing. And now, let's relax the muscles in our face. Relax the muscles in our jaw. Relax the muscles in our cheeks. Relax the muscles controlling our eyes. And relax the muscles in our forehead. Take a few more breaths and feel the body in its relaxed state. Feel the body nice and calm. Feel the body relaxing. If you feel any tension anywhere in your body, you direct your breath to that tension. Relaxing it a little more each time. As you learn to move chi to different areas of your body and open up different areas of the body, you can feel the body relaxing more and more. You're aware of what's happening around you but you're detached from it. You know your surroundings. But you have a sense of detachment from them. the feeling of mindfulness. When you're aware of your surroundings but you're not integrated to them, something can happen in your surroundings and it doesn't affect you.
That's the state of mindfulness. And let's take a few more breaths. Again, cleansing the mind. Enjoying the body's feeling of relaxation. All right. Go ahead and open up your eyes. Who knows? Some of you might be sleeping. That's okay. That's a good thing. Notice how relaxed your body is. If you have any nervous tics or tremors or things produced by anxiety, notice how calm and relaxed you feel right now. Okay? Those of you with high blood pressure, you took your blood pressure now, it's probably considerably lower. I know the dogs are nice and relaxed right now. All right, that does it for meditation for today. We're going to take a 15-minute break. Um, apparently, we're going to have dog treats during intermission. <laughs> Part of the April Fool show, because I'm the perfect fool to be having this. <clears throat> and uh, we will be back in 15 minutes. We're going to do a little bit more of an advanced class, but stay tuned. Um, also wanted to remind you that tomorrow we're doing two classes. The second class, I started advertising that as an advanced class, but um, I think, uh, well, let me, let me decide. I'm going to decide. I think the first class I may do some uh, Tai Chi for rehabilitation and uh, also uh, the Qigong, five element Qigong. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I need to figure that out. All right. Take a 15-minute break. Come back. We'll do some advanced Tai Chi. Thank you very, very much.
Hi. <laughs> it was April Fool's. I had to do that. So, and uh, any of you that were meditating and fell asleep, you're probably awake now. All right. Welcome. Good to see everybody. Hey, I think I see Carol out there. Hi, Carol. Um, good to see everybody. Thanks for joining in. Uh, a little bit more of an advanced class here. Uh, so if you're just tuning in for the first time, um, may want to start with a little bit more of a beginner class. But hey, it's good to see an advanced class. It's good to follow along. Um, uh, good to see some, some more advanced things happening, okay? Um, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we're going to have the first class is at 10 o'clock, kind of a Tai Chi for everybody class. And then the second class, normally I do an advanced class. But I'm doing an all request Thursday and two requests that I've had had a request to do Tai Chi for rehabilitation, which is a beautiful, beautiful form. It's a it's a short form. There's only like three movements to the form, but they're really beautiful movements. And they're uh, the one the exchanging exchanging yin yang energy is a very uh, beautiful uh, movement to it and very intricate. Uh, so you want to tune in on that second hour tomorrow, 11.15 to 12.15, and, and work on that Tai Chi for rehabilitation. And then the other thing I'm going to be covering is, if I have time, I'm going to cover the five-element Qigong breathing, which is a beautiful meditation exercise. Anybody can do the Qigong breathing. It's, it's a really beautiful exercise. It's really good for deep breathing. And it's very, very helpful. Some people use that as a meditation. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you to Sophia for producing all of this, uh, manning all the stuff. And uh, happy April Fool's Day. I'm the perfect fool to be spending it with. So traditional Chinese bow, right hand fist, power, left hand, fingers together, friendship, tucking the thumb, remaining humble, fist into the palm. And we say welcome or ni hao. Beautiful. Um, make sure you've adjusted the music back off a little bit from meditation so they can hear me okay, Sophia, if you would, please. I don't know. You've got your... She's got it. All right. She's got it. Beautiful. Thank you to Sophia for handling all this. There's a, uh, there's a lot of details to keep track of, so I appreciate Sophia doing all of that. Let's start out with our deep breathing exercises. Breathing from the belly. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Push the hands in front of us next. Inhale, hands up in front of the heart. Exhale, pushing forward. Inhale and exhale. Big deep belly breath in. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Arms over the head next, inhale, of course, be kind to your shoulders, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Big, deep belly breath in. Breathe out, push up. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Arms to the side. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Do you need to say bless you to Jessica? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And one more time, inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale. 
No. Inhale, hands up in front of the heart. Exhale, left hand up, right hand is down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Keep looking straight ahead. Keep that upper body straight. Inhale. Hands back up in front of the heart. Exhale. Relax the hands down. Flap the arms like bird wings. Big, deep belly breath in. Long, slow, deep breath out. Again, let's inhale. And exhale. And finally, inhale. And exhale. The last breathing exercise, but you have to promise me you're going to continue to breathe. Gathering chi, big deep belly breath in. Long, slow, deep breath out. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Very nice. That's our breathing exercises to get us started. Good way to start every day. Good way to follow up a meal. Push back from the table. Do some breathing exercises. Let the body relax. Digest the food a little better. Good thing to be doing, all right? Okay, let's move along. Um, now, in previous videos, I've gone through some fairly detailed description of the warm-up exercises. I'm assuming that everybody out there, since I can't see your faces, I'm assuming everybody out there knows the warm-up exercises pretty well. So, going off of that assumption, I'm going to now combine the breathing that we were just doing with the warm-up exercises and this is where Tai Chi really gets its power from and its uh, uh, majesty uh, from is when you combine the deep breathing with uh, the movements, it turns Tai Chi into this beautiful moving meditation. All right. So I'm going to give you the suggestions on how I breathe when I do these exercises. Uh, but uh, your Tai Chi journey is yours, so you need to do what works for you. So if you want to follow along with my breathing, awesome. If that throws you off a little bit, just go into a normal breathing pattern. Just make sure you keep breathing for me there, okay? Okay, so these are 12 exercises, uh, our warm-up exercises. Again, I'm not going to talk about the details of the exercise. That's on previous videos. I'm going to just combine the breathing with the exercise. I'm assuming you are following all rules of safety. So if you get tired, you're going to sit down. If you need a chair next to you, you have a chair next to you. If you need a second one to the other side, you have that available also. Okay. Um, always, 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 if you're tired, please sit down. Don't exercise when you are tired. It's a beautiful thing about video. You can pause it, come back to it later. Okay. All right. So. Wuji position, knees bent, tailbone dropped, head is lifted by a silk thread. We have a beaming smile radiating from our faces because it is a gorgeous day outside. We start with the chin tuck. Inhale the hands up in front of us. Exhale as we tuck in the chin. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. Beautiful. 
looking side to side. Inhale to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top. Exhale, right hand, right shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Tai Chi ball, right hand on top. Exhale, left hand, left shoulder. Inhale, back to center. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale back to center. Prayer hands. Exhale, relax the hands down. Forward shoulder circles. Inhale the shoulders up. Exhale, shoulders down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now reverse. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Gathering chi, we're reaching for infinity. Inhale, we're opening and expanding the body. Exhale, relax the hands down. Inhale, and exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Touching heaven and earth, lifting the head by the silk thread. Inhale, two prayer hands. Exhale, left hand up, right hand is down. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale back to center. Two prayer hands, exhale, relax the hands down. Carrying the ball side to side, not moving the hips, turning the upper body. Inhale, two prayer hands, Tai Chi ball, left hand is on top, exhale to the left. Inhale the ball over, exhale to the right. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale the ball over, back to center, exhale, relax the hands down. Beautiful. Hip exercises side to side. Have those chairs available if you need them. Inhale, two prayer hands. Exhale, gently pushing right. Tap or extend the left. Inhale through center. Exhale, push left. Tap or extend the right leg. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, relax the hands down. Forward and backwards, weight shifts right. Inhale, left heel. Exhale, left toe. Inhale on the heel. 
Exhale on the toe. Inhale and exhale. Come back to center. Weight shifts left. Inhale, right heel. Exhale, right toe. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And back to center. Beautiful. Heel kick is next. Use your chair. Stay safe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. One more time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Bow stance. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. And now the ankles go nice and slow on this one. Inhale on the heel, exhale on the toe. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Weight shifts, right foot. Inhale, heel, exhale, toe. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Weight shifts right, left foot. Inhale, little toe, exhale, big toe. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Then weight shifts to the left. Inhale, little toe, right foot. Exhale, big toe. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. And back to center. All right. Shake those legs loose. Nice work, everybody. Remember, if you have any questions, you can type them into the YouTube chat. Sophia will relay any relevant questions to me, or I'll keep the chat window open for a few minutes after class in case anybody has any questions or comments. Okay? Or you might get to see Sophia dancing or feeding the dogs. Um. <coughs> you have to see Lulu doing waving paws like clouds, so. All right, <clears throat> so a little hint about hydrating and drinking water. 
One of the pipes in your chest is for drinking, the other's for breathing. Don't confuse those two or you end up coughing like I just did. All right. So um, what I would like to do is run through Tai Chi for Arthritis Part 1. Again, I'm assuming that as you're watching this class and you know Tai Chi for Arthritis Part 1, um, and you don't have to have arthritis to know Tai Chi for Arthritis, by the way, uh, but it's a great thing to do if you do. Um, however, I want to give those people who know Tai Chi for Arthritis really well, I want to give you a chance just to kind of flow through the form. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go through Tai Chi for Arthritis Part 1. Um, week number one, we're in week two. Week number one, I have some pretty detailed instructions on Tai Chi for Arthritis, the basic six and the advanced six. All right. So if you're not familiar with it, now might be a good time to pause and go through those. Or if you want to just play along, that's fine. We always say fake it till you make it. It's worked well for me for many years. Um, let's go ahead. Let's go through the uh, Tai Chi for Arthritis part one form. Um, and let's just kind of flow through it. OK, um, we want to make sure that we go nice and slow. So I'm going to turn around. We're going to do a follow on with this. OK, so heels together. Feet 45 degree angle, standing up nice and straight and tall. Take a couple of deep cleansing breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Begin with commencement. If you happen to be just seeing this for the first time, concentrate on your feet. Don't worry about the hands. Worry about what you're doing with the feet. Open and close. Single whip to the right. Cloud hands three times to the right. Back to center, open and close. Single whip left. Cloud hands to the left, three times. Back to center, open and close. Brush knee sequence left. Play the lute. Parry and punch. Embracing the tiger, pushing the mountain. Open and close. Brush knee to the right. Play the lute. Parry and punch. Embracing the tiger. Pushing the mountain. Open, close. And close the form. Boom. All right, again, if you have any questions on any of those movements, go back to some previous ones or you can email me a question if you have any of those, okay? 
So we're going to move on to part two, Tai Chi for Arthritis, part two. Okay. Um, part two is a beautiful part. It contains um, two really key moves. One is called leisurely or lazily tying the coat. Um, you will see the leisurely tying the coat throughout the soon 73 form. So just to give you a little hierarchy for those of you that don't know, uh, Soon Lu Tang invented the, invented the Soon style of Tai Chi. Um, he had the Soon 98. Uh, um, many years ago, the Chinese, the in, an international commission led by the Chinese, decided to, um, there were a lot of different forms and um, a lot of different eras, so they wanted to standardize them. So they took the Soon 98 and made it into the Soon 73. Uh, the International Commission did. Uh, Dr. Paul Lam, uh, one of my mentors, um, took the Soon 73, um, realizing that it was a beautiful exercise for older adults or people with arthritis or people with balance problems, and he came up with Tai Chi for arthritis. And it was such a hit around the world um, that he developed a part two. Okay? So, uh, tai Chi for Arthritis is, be is being taught around the world. The CDC recommends it for balance, specifically that form of Tai Chi for balance. Okay? So, part two, leisurely tying the coat. The other one is the repulsing the monkey, which is kind of a brush knee move, uh, but we're turning in different directions, okay? So, let's take a look at leisurely tying the coat. Um, now, I'm going to switch pers perspective. Well, actually, I'm going to demonstrate it once from the proper perspective, and then I'm going to turn around and face the camera so you have a better idea of the moves, all right? So we've just finished up with part one. We come back to center, and we open and close. Now, if we were doing part one at this point, we would close the forum, but, but we're the high achievers, so we're going to move on, and we're going to do a brush knee to the right. And then we do leisurely tying the coat. Beautiful. All right, that's leisurely tying the coat. That's in the follow-on view. Let me do the same thing, but now I'm going to do it facing the camera so you get a little bit better idea. So you have the front perspective now, so the face-on perspective. I'm, I'm still going to go uh, to the right-hand side, but I'm going to do face-on for you now, okay? Let me back up so you get the feet in this, okay? So we do a brush knee to the right. And then leisurely tying the coat. Open and close. I just throw the open and close in there. That's kind of like my reward can't give you skittles but i can give you an open and close and let you breathe all right so one more perspective because i've been doing the hand work either to one side or the other so let me do the hand work coming towards you so we would come and do a brush oops i need to back up um do a brush knee coming towards you now perspective from here So that's from all the different perspectives, okay? Um, again, beautiful thing about video, you're able to go back and review it as many times as you need to, okay? Let's take a detailed look at the hand movements. I've just done a brush knee. I'm gonna to face towards you. I think this is the best perspective here. So my right hand is down, like I've just brushed my knee. No, notice it's it's still within my range of vision. I can see it from my peripheral vision, but the hand is just outside the leg, so it's not in here, and it's not way out here. 
it's just outside and I have a rounded elbow. I haven't locked the elbow out, okay? The left hand is pushed forward right about shoulder height, all right? So from here, a lot of different ways we can do this. If you're just starting out, bring the right hand kind of up the center line and then out in front. Attach the left hand to the right wrist as you step back empty with the left foot. Shift the weight onto the left, the continue that circle down and then up to the chest. And now I do a half step with the right foot. I step forward with the right, thrust both hands forward, half step, left foot. All right, I like to call that chapter one of leisurely tying the coat, okay? Let's try that again. From the end of brush knee, right hand up the center line out in front. Attach the left hand to the right wrist as you step back empty left. Sink the weight to the left. Bring the hands up to the chest, half step right. Step forward on the right, thrust forward, half step, left foot. All right, now I'll show you a little different way. If you've been doing this for a little while or you wanna make your brain work a little more, um, so I've been showing it that you bring the hand up in front, you attach the hand here, and you keep it attached for the rest of the movement, okay? In actuality, what will happen is, and you'll see this done a lot of different ways if you go exploring on the internet. There's one called like uh, windmill arms. I don't, it, I don't prescribe to that one as much, but pff, hey, what do I know? Uh, all right. So second one, though, is you can bring the hand up in front of you and out in front, and the left hand is by the wrist but not attached to the wrist. So I'm going to turn, whoops, which side do I turn to? There you go. Uh, and turn to the side. So the left hand is by the wrist but it's not attached to the wrist, okay? And I step back on the left and I bring both hands coming down and then that left hand, when I'm down here, down by the Dantian, that's when the left hand attaches to the right. I bring the hands up right at, th at the level of my heart, and then I push forward, half step, left foot. All right? So you can do that one if you prefer. Okay. Any questions, Sophia? All right. That, so that's chapter one. Chapter two from here, I step back on the left, I sink the weight to the left, and I turn my body to the right. Notice my toe, belly button, and hand all turn together. And this is very easy to do because if I just turn my belly button, they all turn, all right? My hand continues this circle. Notice it's just below the shoulder, and I round out. I come back to center once again, and then I push forward once again. Okay, let's do that again. From the end of chapter one, my right hand is pushing out, left hand is attached to the wrist. I step back on the left, I sink on to the left. I turn out to the right, the hand keeps turning. I keep my back straight. I come back to center and push forward. Half step left foot. All right. Now, I'll tell you a couple of things that I see in classes. I haven't seen anybody here do it, but hey, I can't see you. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift into different perspectives here. Um, I, a common thing that I see happening here is I get done with the brush knee and the hand comes up and I see people as they're bringing the hand up, they step back. So their weight is already on the back foot and the hand hasn't even come up and around, okay? So what should happen here from the side? This hand comes up when you're here is when you want to step back, and then the weight shifts back as this hand comes down. So it becomes this beautiful weight shift as you bring the hands down. So from here to here, you're shifting all the weight is on the right, and all the weight is on the left. All right, I was leaving my hand attached to the wrist um, again because if you start trying to think of too many things at the same time, my brain explodes. So all the weights on the right, I step back empty and when I get to here, all the weights on the left and then it goes back to all the weight on the right. 
okay? So I see people sometimes, they'll be here on brush knee and they'll step back and do this whole thing off of the back foot and that's not what your intent is, okay? Um, second thing that I see quite commonly, and I'm gonna have to get the right perspective on this. This is probably the best perspective. On chapter two, I'll see people do this and they start leaning with the back. So they start leaning and doing this kind of a motion with the back, all right? We wanna keep the back nice and straight. So as we shift the weight back, we keep that back nice and straight as we round out. And then we push forward again, okay? So those are some tips on leisurely or lazily tying the coat. Um, if anybody has any questions, again, you can type them in. Um, I think I covered that one pretty well. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to cover from it though. Um, tai Chi is all about movement of energy, okay? One reason why I love leisurely tying the coat and I think it's such a beautiful movement is, is it shows us the two different ways to deflect energy. So the Chinese teach us that someone, I was having this discussion with someone yesterday, as a matter of fact, that if someone's coming like straight at you uh, with energy, you don't want to come straight at them. And then it becomes like two fists hitting one another straight on. Instead, if someone is coming at you with energy, you deflect their energy, okay? And the leisurely tying the coat shows us different ways to deflect energy. Um, the first way to deflect energy is to deflect the energy down. Okay, actually, here would be a better. So someone is coming at you, you're taking their energy and you are deflecting it down. Okay, second one is to deflect the energy out to the side. Okay, so if someone is coming at you, you move the energy out to the side. Okay, think of the, if you're standing here and someone's coming straight on and they're running full bore straight towards you, um, how do you change the parameters there? Because they're probably gonna run right over you. Well, one is, is you can grab them and push them down and past you. The other is, as they're coming at you, you can grab them and push them past you, okay? And that's what leisurely tying the coach shows us. It's two different ways of deflecting energy, okay? All right, next we are going to look at, um, the repulsing the monkey moves, okay? These are really key moves. One thing that I want you to concentrate on, again, since, excuse me, since I can't see you through the, the magic of online video, since I can't see you, um, I have to assume that you are doing good at the brush knee move, okay? If you have not mastered the brush knee move, you should master that before you move in and, and work on the repulsing the monkey, okay? Gotcha. Um, so we wanna make sure that you understand that brush knee move very well before you move into repulsing the monkey, okay? So if you don't know that, probably a good chance just to stop and wa watch this for right now, but go back and master that brush knee move. That's why this lovely blue tape is on the floor because as I'm doing brush knee, yeah, we're calling it lovely and blue, but it makes for a really good uh, way to demonstrate. So if I do a brush knee coming towards the camera as I step out, notice I have space between my feet. A lot of people, when they do this, they want to turn and just set the foot. So my feet are lining up and I'm on a balance beam, okay? So you have to know that concept uh, to safely do repulsing the monkey, okay? So... I'm going to start with pulsing the monkey here. I'm going to use my, my lovely blue tape that Sophia likes so much. Um, we start from punching fist under elbow, okay? So I'm facing the left wall. This is the front of the room, so I'm in the proper perspective right now. I turn the upper body to the back of the room, and then I step back with the right foot and shift the weight onto the right, and the hands come up into yin yang palm, and I do a half step with the left foot. Then I turn my dantian, I'm turning my upper body in the direction that I wanna go. I step out empty with the left foot, notice it's a sweeping step, and then I shift the weight onto the left, let that right toe turn a little bit, and do a half step with the right foot. 
All right, let's do that again. I start by punching fist under elbow. I step back, I'm sorry, I turn the upper body, I step back on the right, I sink the weight to the right, hands, yin yang, palm, half step left foot. I turn the body, sweeping step, left hand brushes the knee, the right hand pushes forward, half step, right foot. Awesome. Okay, so that's the first repulse the monkey. Second repulsing the monkey is a straight step backwards, all right? So let me do this in the proper perspective. Let me get my, so you got my feet in the picture. I'm going to scoot forward. All right. Uh, second repulse the monkey. This is in true form. So I'm, in, I'm facing the back of the room right now. I step straight back. I float the palm up. I turn 180 degree turn. So now I'm facing the front of the room once again. Okay. I start by facing the back. I turn and face the front. Okay. So. Let's practice just the footwork. I've done my first repulse the monkey. I'm facing the back of the room. The weight is on the left. I do a half step with the right foot. I want to just do the footwork for a moment. Notice where my feet are in, re in, uh, in perspective to the blue line. I step straight back with that right foot. So that right foot is still on the blue line. I shift my way back onto the right and I float up the left toe. So my left toe is in the air. I toe in towards the left wall and I shift the weight on to the left. I turn towards the front, my belly button turns, I spin on that right foot and then I do a sweep step. Now notice my left foot is on the blue line and my right foot I have space. And then I weight shift onto the right, half step left foot, okay? Now, if you're having trouble with the footwork, you need to stop, go back, review this, all right? You wanna make sure you have a good, you wanna make sure you have good footwork so that you are safe when you are doing this, all right? What I will see a lot of people doing, again, my right foot is on the blue line right now. The weight's on the left and I do a half step with that right foot. I'll see people step back behind them as they do this and then they will turn and then do a step like this. The problem happens is, let me turn sideways and do this. This will give you a better perspective. So I have the half step with the right foot. I step back behind me. And then as I toe in, notice my toes. I have a really small base here. I'm kind of knock kneed. So this position right here, I'm very easy to knock over, even by something called gravity, OK? So I don't want to have this small base. So instead, I step straight back, so as I turn in, see I've got plenty of space between my feet, which allows me to do that turn safely, okay? If you need to take several steps during that turn, that's okay also. You do, um, so like a modification uh, for that would be weights on the left, half step right. I step back on the right and I weight shift and I toe in a little bit with the left. I weight shift left, I step a little bit further back with the right, weight shifts right, toe in left. Weight shifts left, step with that right, and do a half step. That makes a really good modification if you need to do that, okay? But we're not going to try and, and do any turning kicks or anything like that, okay? All right, so let's add the hand movements in there. I'm assuming you understand the footwork, or if you don't, you'll go back and review it. Ah, the magic of the video. So I've just done my first repulsing the monkey. I step straight back with the right foot. As I shift the weight right, as I come up with the left toe, the left hand comes up and the right hand just kind of pulls back a little bit and it's right into yin yang palm once again. So I just leave my hands where they are and I focus on the feet as I turn with the feet, step out with the right foot and then as I weight shift onto the right, the right hand brushes the knee and the left hand pushes forward. All right, let me do that from a couple different perspectives also. Okay, so let me do it from, yes, this will work from this perspective. Weights on the left, half step right. I step straight back with the right. I float the left palm, left toe up simultaneously, and that right hand is right by that left elbow. Leave my hands where they're at, toe in left, sink weight left, sweeping step right. 
right hand brushes the knee and left hand pushes forward. Half step, left foot. So now let's try that from a third perspective, looking at it straight back. Now my left foot is on the blue line. I've done my brush knee, half step, right foot. Right foot steps straight back. Weight shifts right, float up left palm and left toe. My hands are essentially in yin yang palm right now. I toe in with the left foot, I shift weight left, I turn, sweeping step right, right hand brushes the knee, and left hand pushes forward. Okay, got that? So again, go back, review those from the different angles until you feel comfortable with it, okay? Now, let's flip back into real time perspective once again, and let's go through the three repulsing the monkeys, okay? So, weight's on the left, half step right foot. I've just punched fist under elbow. I turn to the back of the room. I step back onto the right, sink weight right, half step left foot. I turn to the back of the room, first repulsing the monkey. I step straight back with the right foot, float the right hand up. I toe in, shift weight left, turn towards the front, bless you. Right hand brushes knee, left hand pushes forward, half step, left foot. For my third repulse the monkey, and I, I hear this called the third repulse the monkey or brush knee. I've heard it referred to as both. I step slightly back with the left foot. It's just a small movement with the left foot, and I shift my weight onto the left. I toe in with the right foot a little bit, and I bring the hands up into yin yang palms, and then I shift to the right. And then I do a sweeping step with the left foot, left hand brushes the knee, right hand pushes forward, half step, right foot. And relax. Okay, how was that? Raise your hand if you have any questions. Do I see any hands? I don't see any hands up. Oh, come on, it's April Fool's Day. Give me a break. Um, on that last exercise, or that last repulsing the monkey, so... Uh, do, 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 I'm totally out of perspective now. I was doing it here, so I'm going to turn towards you. Um, okay, I'm not going to try and get... In. So on that third repulsing the monkey, um, hold it. i got to make sure I'm in the proper perspective. I knew I didn't feel right. Okay, so third repulsing the monkey. The weight is on the right foot. Right hand is brushed the knee. Left hand is pushed forward. Again, well, this is really repulsing the monkey, so still brushing the knee. So for this one, I step slightly back on the left foot and shift the weight onto the left. I float the hands up in the yin yang palm and notice I turn, I bring the right toe up and turn slightly in on the right foot. And then I shift the weight onto the right and I do that third repulsing the monkey. Um, now in this position, I'd be going towards the left wall and I do a half step with the right foot, okay? So I start here, I do a 90 degree repulse the monkey. I do a 180 degree repulse the monkey, and then I do a 90 degree repulse the monkey, okay? All right, so I am assuming you can go back and you can look at all of those, okay? The other two movements to put into uh, per perspective here, we leisurely tie the coat, we come back and we do a modified single whip. We're used to doing a single whip on the left, which again, using my lovely blue tape here, I weight shift right, I step slightly forward. This is the one we do at the beginning of the form where I adjust the foot, push both hands forward, flatten the hands. That's a single whip. In part two, we do a modified single whip where I weight shift to the right, now I step slightly back with the left foot. And as I shift the weight left, I extend the hands out so the hands stay in the same spot in this lovely 3D world we're in. And I open up the hands. And then I do punch fist under elbow where all the weight shifts left. I toe in with the right foot, sink the weight onto the right, adjust the left as I block. Then I step forward. I turn my palm, left palm to the front of the room and punch fist under elbow. All right, showing this from perspective, I'm facing the front of the room. I do modified single whip left, punch fist under elbow, weight shift left, 
toe in right. Sink on to the right, block, step forward, punch fist under elbow. And now from here is when I do the repulsing the monkey. Okay? Questions? Guess not. So she's not raising her hand. So, okay. Self high five. Uh, or gear shift. All right. So let's go through Tai Chi for Arthritis, part two. We're going to do both sides. Okay? Um, now, if you get stuck on something, pause, review, um, play along, fake it till you make it, however you want to look at it. Uh, but we're going to do part two on both sides, okay? Let's give that a shot. Um, so, we've just finished part one. We open and close. We do a brush knee to the right. How many peeps, Sophia? Leisurely tying the coat. Turn to the front, open and close. Modified single whip left. Punch fist under elbow. Repulsing the monkey three times. Second time. And third, repulsing the monkey. Turning into leisurely tying the coat on the left side. Ah, see, we didn't practice this one, did we? Center, open and close. The beautiful thing is, is you get to practice leisurely tying the coat to the left once again. So brush knee left. And leisurely tying the coat left once again. Open and close. Modified single whip right. Punch fist under elbow to the right. Repulsing the monkey three times now from the right side. That was the second one. Third, repulse the monkey. And we finish where we started at leisurely tying the coat. And return to the front. Open and close and close the form. Yay. Okay, let me talk about closing for just one second. Okay, I'm going to use my blue tape that Sophia loves so much. So as I finish that leisurely tying the coat, um, I do my first leisurely part, first part, second chapter. Notice that my right foot is on the blue, blue tape, okay? As I do that, second repulsing the monkey. So I'm here, or I'm sorry, second chapter of leisurely tying the coat. So I'm here. I'm gonna turn back to the front of the room, which is in this direction. So I have three choices. Most likely, 
you guys won't need the first choice, but just in case you do, I have a half step with the left foot. I can step straight back with the left foot, shift the weight onto the left, and kind of step forward. Actually, let me do that a little different. I step back with the left foot. I turn the toe to the front of the room, shift the weight to the left, and kind of step slightly forward with the right foot. So I'm in this position. I open and close, and then I close the form by stepping in. Okay? I think most of your, your balance is a little better. So the other thing that you can do is you take this left foot and step back. My left foot is facing forward, but my heel is on the same line where my right foot is. So I'm going to lift my right foot up here. Notice the heel is on that blue line. Okay. And so I weight shift left and then I toe forward with the right foot. Both heels are on that line and I open and close. It might be a little better to show you from this perspective, okay? So the weight's on the right foot. I step back with the left foot. My left heel is on the blue line. I weight shift left. I toe forward right, and I'm back into the Wuji position. I think if you're doing part two, that you will be able to do that second one easily enough, but you do whatever is safe for you. Bah, but there's a third. And I'm going to demonstrate from this perspective. So I just got done. So I take the left foot and attach the left heel to the right foot, but my foot is at a 45 degree angle. And then I weight shift to the left and I toe forward with the right foot, coming back into that 45 degree. And then I open and close and bring the hands down. Or looking at it from this perspective, um, this, this may make a little bit more sense. I realize I really finished to the other side, but I want you to see it forward from the camera. So I'm going to pull my pant legs up. I'm going to look like Ozarker. Um, so the weight's on the right. I step with this left foot, attaching the left heel to the right. I shift the weight to the left. I toe forward with the right. I'm back into the feet at a 45 degree angle, open and close. And then I close the form. Okay. So there's three different ways for you to close. You can review those and do whichever one works well for you. Okay. Um, awesome. We, we did, a, did a lot of work. If you're just learning the part two, probably go back, review last week. And then these are some additional enhancements intended to enhance what you learned last week for Tai Chi for Arthritis Part 2. I will be labeling these videos by the weekend at the latest for this week. Last week's are labeled, and I even have time stamped them so you can know where you can start. All right, tomorrow we're going to do Tai Chi for Everybody uh, from 10 to 11, and we're going to continue Tai Chi for Everybody, but do um, Tai Chi for Rehabilitation, which is a really cool, very beautiful form. I highly recommend that you do it, and hopefully we're going to do uh, Five Element Qigong. And so if he has... And uh, you want to say something live over the air? Oh, Sophia wants to say something. We're going to do our cool down and then we'll give Sophia the microphone. I don't know what she's going to say. I'm a little scared. You know, those producers, they always want to come out in front of the camera. Tighten up all the muscles in the body and relax. Again, tighten up the muscles, squeeze the muscles and relax. And then one more time, tighten up the muscles and relax. Finally, gather chi. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Beautiful. I look forward to doing Tai Chi with you tomorrow. Um, and Sophia's going to come up and I'm going to Um, first of all, hi, thanks for tuning in every day. Thank you to Sophia for doing <laughs> this. Um, if you subscribe to our channel and click, click the little bell icon, you should get a notification every time we go live. So just a heads up about that. Thank you, Sophia. All right. We're going to call it a day. Thank you so much. Have a great day.